started making our applique Ukrainian awareness design. Now, this design is fairly large for the 6x10 hoop. And the reason we did it in the large hoop is that the idea is to put it on a t-shirt or at the back of a shirt or a, a jacket or something. Or actually to make um, like in, it into like a patch that you can add in your window or wherever you would like to spread some awareness with this beautiful design. And then of course we did build the design around the size of our sunflower. Now you can see that this is an applique design but what makes it interesting is that we actually have like a quilted effect um, inside of the applique to split up the two colors. I think you are going to enjoy doing that and I'm going to show you how to create a beautiful applique design with absolute ease and be very successful. So let's see what we will need in order to make this beautiful design. Now the first thing that you are going to need, of course, is artificial sunflowers. Now if you look at the size of this sunflower, I would say that it is a 5 inch size sunflower, right? This is like when I, it's like the palm of my hand. Um, that's a good measurement if you want to go into a store and see the size. It's about a palm size, right? But what is important is the inside part of the flower that it should be correct for using with this specific design. So it is one and a quarter inch in the middle, right? We do have some of these in stock. I've got limited stock, but I do have some available that was meant for another project, but I'm more than happy to um, give people these flowers if they need them, if they can't find them, all right? So we will have some of them listed on the website if you can't find them anywhere else because these ones are the exact correct size and they work very well for machine embroidery. The other thing that you're going to need is three colors of thread. You can see I've lined them up over here. I've got a beautiful shiny sunshine yellow, a nice blue and a black, right? And then of course you are going to decide on what you want to add to your project. I've got my 6x10 hoop. I'm just doing it on a piece of muslin simply for demonstration purposes. And I do have some cutaway stabilizer to the back. But you're going to decide where you are going to do your project. Then I've got a small part of very interesting, it's evening fabric. Can you see that the, it almost looks like it's scrunched, right? So this is a, a, a glittery evening fabric that looks beautiful for my center. But you can use any texture type of fabric in the middle. Or you can use faux leather if you like in the middle. Anything you think that will look good for your uh, center part of your sunflower as an applique, you can use. Very important. You're going to at least need a 5 inch by 5 inch block of um, plastic topping. This is a water soluble topper. It looks like plastic. Mine has got like a grit side on the one side and it's smooth on the other side. So you're definitely going to need a piece of plastic topping. And then I've prepared two pieces of fabric. Now, this could be a little bit hard to find the exact colors, but... I don't see why you can't use a printed blue or a printed yellow because I think it's the idea that count. So see how close you can come to the Ukrainian colors uh, if you are looking at fabrics. Now my yellow size, I did cut 5 inch by 10 inch and then my blue size is a 4 inch by 10 inch and I've ironed to the back some uh, interfusible webbing right. Now interfusible webbing is the success behind beautiful appliques. Now, before I did fuse this on, there's one very, very important rule in coming to applique. What might that be? Aha! Uh -huh. Pre-wash your fabric. Very important because if you're going to go through all of the trouble to do the appliques perfect, now that um, design goes into the uh, washer and then into the dryer, and then all of a sudden you see, ugh, why is my applique so ugly? It looked beautiful when it first it came out. It is because your fabric shrinked and now it looks awful. So pre-wash your fabric and do iron an interfusible webbing, a light one like steamer seam, 
there applique paper there is so many uh, different ones that you can hot fix is a fantastic one that you can use to the back of your um, fabrics and we are going to um, use them just like that so let's get started so I'm working on the amazing baby lock Solaris and I'm going to go into the embroidery field of my machine. I'll select my pocket, my USB, and I'm going to select my Ukraine sunflower design, right? I'm going to click on set. Now I'm in the um I need to be in the 6x10 hoop right now the Solaris will immediately know in which size um, embroidery hoop you are trying to embroider and if the design is too big, um, big for the smaller hoop it'll tell you right but I kind of like like to see where my parameters is within the hoop if I want to add wording to it so let's say you want to say in a bigger hoop you want to place this and you want to say be strong Ukraine or you want to do something personal with someone's name on it or something that you want to do then you can definitely do that so I'm going to go into the embroidery screen and the first um, is going to stitch out a guideline for us to show us where to do the placement of our first fabric which is going to be our blue fabric right now I already told you I'm I'm working um, in the 6x10 hoop I've got muslin with cutaway stabilizer and I always add some felt to the sides of my frame simply because it makes it drum tight and more secure but you can see that my felt is not in my embroidery area but it helps me to hoop better right so the needle I'm using is a 80 slash 12 needle and I'm simply going to run my guideline to stitch it my bobbin thread is a 60 weight bobbin thread i'm using polyester in a blue color let's stitch the guideline our guideline is stitched out and now i'm going to do the placement for my blue fabric now we first need to remove the paper part to the back of our fabric. So I'm just gently pulling off the piece of paper and you can see there's some glue. Look how shiny it looks at the back. And that's really going to help you to fuse your top fabric onto your base. Now you can use poly cotton, you can use 100% um, cotton, you can use whatever fabric you can find in blue colors, right? So I'm just simply going to make sure that the glue side is over my guideline over here. I'm just going to make sure I place it everywhere. And I'm going to use my favorite embroidery tool, the mermaid tail, to keep it in place. My fabric has been tacked down and now I'm going to stitch the zigzag on the right side. With my zigzag in place, we need to trim. So I'm going to trim around my zigzag area right next to it. And on this side, I'm going to leave like one eighth of an inch next to my stitch line but close to the zigzag and I'll come and show you once I have trimmed it. I've trimmed close to my zigzag left one eighth of an inch and now it's going to stitch a guideline to show you where it's going to do the placement for the yellow fabric remember because it's inside of one design we've got two pieces of different fabrics we kind of like going to do an appli quilt. So it's going to stitch the guideline showing me where to place the yellow fabric. So we need to place our yellow fabric over here. But instead of placing it with the right side up, we are going to do it a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure I cut it on the one side 
I'm just going to cut it on the one side that my glue is right next to my line over here, right? So you can see my glue is up until this edge. So what I'm going to do is I turn it around. I'm going to pull off my paper side. Can you see the glue side? And now what I'm going to do is I'm just basically going to let it overlap for about one eighth of an inch and my glue side is facing up because once it's stitched it down I've changed to a yellow thread as well you're going to flip it over and it's going to have like little uh, seam at the top right so I'm just putting it over one eighth of an inch glue side up right right side down and I'm going to let my mermaid tool help me to keep it in place and I'm going to take it down. So next we are going to flip over our yellow fabric right and I'm simply going to flip over my yellow fabric to this side right and I'm going to make sure that here in the middle so what I like to do right I'm just quickly going to show you what I'm actually going to do let me take out the hoop remember we've got glue on this side right so now you don't want to iron the whole thing simply because all I'm trying to achieve here is just that that part is going to lay nice and flat when I'm doing the top stitching on it so I'm just going to hold it down like that and I'm going to take my little mini iron by clover and I'm just going to activate my patch bond or well not my patch bond my interfusible webbing uh, like steamer seam and I'm just going to fuse it if you're using hot fix whatever fusible webbing you are using right Patch bond is a heavy duty fusible webbing which I prefer not to use when doing regular appliques. So I'm not going to do the whole thing right now. We will still activate it, but look at that. That's really going to help it lay nice and flat. So now I don't have to worry that this is going to bubble up. It's going to be absolutely perfect. I activated my fusible webbing. And what I love about the fusible webbing is that it's tacking down my top fabric onto the base fabric and that gives us perfect results so let's go and first it's going to stitch the top stitch and then do the zigzag around the rest of my yellow part We are done with the zigzag around our yellow part and all I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to trim right next to my zigzag and we'll be back ready to stitch our applique around our parts. So all my applique uh, parts are stitched out and trimmed and now I'm going to take my little clover iron. I really like to work with this small little iron in the hoop because sometimes I use different mediums like faux leather or evening uh, fabrics that I, if I would uh, use a bigger iron I probably would melt some parts of it but this one really helps you to just go wherever you need it to go right so I'm just going to activate my fusible webbing on all parts of the applique and that is the magic of a perfect applique because you'll top fabric is fused onto your base fabric so that'll uh, allow you when you are going to wash it to have zero puckering it's not going to shrink and that is why it's also so important for you to pre-wash your fabric so now we are going to go back into the hoop and all that's going to happen I'll be stitching the satin stitches in yellow on my left satin stitches in blue on the right and once we're done we will do our sunflower.
So we are done with the satin stitches and I've changed my color of thread to black and now you will see that it's going to stitch like a center cross where it wants us to place our sunflower. got a cross in the middle and I'm taking my sunflower right and I'm going to remove the center part of the sunflower so in this sunflower's case I'm just going to start to remove the back part right okay there's my back there it goes and then I'm going to remove my front part you can see there goes my front part now you just want to make sure because sometimes not with all flowers but they've added like an extra little thing here in the middle I'm just going to make sure all plastic parts is removed you definitely don't want to stitch it inside of your machine right so now you can see there's like a little hole in each layer right so I'm just going to make sure that the holes are over each other like this you see that okay and then I'm going to take my pin like this and now I'm going to place it exactly into position so I'm just going to stick it in there right in the middle it's a little bit hard in the air because um. there we go right so there it's exactly over there so what I'm going to do now is I'm quickly going to show you how I'm going to use some masking tape to make sure my leaves is everywhere out of the place and then I'm first going to stitch um, my tack down for my flower and I'll show you the rest of it all right so what I do to make it easier I just take a container so that my design can kind of like hang over the container so that I keep my um, flower on top of the container so I can like so that the, the pin is hanging in the air that's what we're trying to achieve here <clears throat> and then I'm going to take nice big pieces of masking tape and I'm simply going to tape down the four edges of my flowers and making sure that it's exactly still in the middle over there that's good I'm just going to tack this one down all right let's go back to the machine and tack down our sunflower so before we're going to stitch you definitely need to remove your pen right everything is still beautifully intact I'm just going to gently slide my hoop back into the machine and I'm still going to use my favorite tool over here if anything happens and I need to help to push it down like on the sides I'll just go on the side and make sure that is this uh, foot is not hooking underneath one of the leaves you will just now see why we are going to use the plastic topper but for our first layer to tack it down I use my mermaid tool to help me now it's going to do a zigzag Now the next step that I'm going to do is take my um, sunflower center and I'm going to place it over here, right? But before we're going to stitch, I just want to grab some more of my plastic, right? So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to take my plastic and I'm going to cover my whole flower like this, right? And then I'm going to take 
two nice long pieces and I'm just going to on actually just on this side I just want to keep my plastic in place until we are completely done so that'll probably do so now it's going to tack down my fabric we now have to trim around our center now what you can do at this stage if you want to save your topping right you can definitely lift it up like that and you can trim underneath I'm just going to remove it and add another piece again and I'll be back to show you what I did and we will continue to stitch so I've removed the plastic on top of it but I just want to show you something when you are going to cut this right I want you to be really careful take your time on this you don't want to cut one of your sunflower petals loose so I kind of like hold it like that and just snip underneath cutting it right the piece of the um, water soluble that I did use is big enough that I'm going to cover that area again once we're done I'll show you how I did it but let me go finish it up without cutting my piece. so I've trimmed around my sunflower center and this part is still really big enough so what I do is I just kind of like fold it a bit over so that it covers the hole and I simply turn it with the whole side down like that right or if you want to fold it bigger over what you basically just want to do is you want to cover that area so that your embroidery foot do not hook onto your um, plastic right so I'm just taking the old masking tape you can reuse them right it's just really to keep it like this and this will do so now it's covered we're gonna go back over here and it's beautifully going to stitch our center details just going to use my mermaid tool to hold it at first until it tack down the plastic part and there we go so this is really helping us because it's thick it's on the edge right of this seam that we did so you are working on a thicker part of your um, design now because you are through basically two layers of fabric and then three layers of flower and it's really helping you now so that the foot don't catch onto one of the petals grid that's stitched out I love this grid textured feeling it's going to uh, do the circle around our center and this is also very dense stitching so that is why the plastic topper is working very well done stitching and I can tell you this is a fast stitch out it takes about 29 minutes if you are on let me see on which speed I am yeah I'm on the slowest speed setting actually because I always like when I'm doing things like the flower to set it down to my slowest speed setting so if you would stitch at an average of let's say 500 stitches per minute it is a 24 minute stitch out really not a long time so what I'm going to do now is just remove my masking tape right and I'm just going to tear off the plastic over here and now I can gently remove my masking tape that was holding my flower you want to do it gently you don't want to pull out the flower that 
one of the leaves pull out or something like that. The petals, not the leaves. Right. Pull it like that. Great. And now it looks pretty good. So I just want to show you at the gridded part. Right. Over here we've got the water soluble um, topper over there. And all I'm going to do is take a wedge sponge and I'll just hold it there for a few seconds and that is how you're going to remove it. So you're going to add a little bit of water to the middle over there. See, I'm going to add some more water just simply to remove it. There it goes. It's removed. Uh, it's the shimmer of my fabric that you are seeing over here. But look at that. Absolutely beautiful. I think we did an amazing job. So I did mine. Now it's your turn to do yours.